a mix of a couple restorative poses, especially at the beginning and the end of our practice, and then some other gentle movement through the beginning. And this would be a good time. I, I heard mention uh, folks asking about props. So yes, yoga blocks, find them. They're, yeah, they're everywhere. They really are everywhere. And the yoga blocks are, are not expensive. And, uh, and they're good risers for other things. Like you can use them <laughs> if you're not using them for yoga. They're good risers for other stuff. <laughs> um, but anyways, we'll start in a uh, restorative pose. Supta Baddha Konasana, reclining bound angle. So what that looks like, the kind of template for the pose, is reclining over some kind of support. So if you have like couch pillows or like, let me grab this and I'll show you. I have this floor pillow that's really lovely for these kinds of poses. And it's just one of the, like a generic big pillow for the floor. And it works really nicely because it's got a good amount of squish. You can add an extra pillow or a blanket over the top. So I'll use that for this. And the feet in Supta Baddha Konasana are, that's the Baddha Konasana part, the uh, bound angle part. The soles of the feet are together, the knees go out to the sides. And if you have a blanket or a towel, now you can always use, if you've got two yoga blocks, you can tuck a block under each leg. But if you don't have yoga blocks or something like that, grab your towel or your, yoga or your blanket and roll it up, kind of long and skinny, like this is, I don't know, maybe three or three and a half feet long. I don't think it's quite four. And then you place the, the rolled up blanket on top of your feet and then swing it around and tuck it under, between the shin and the floor. Swing it around, tuck it in. So I'm going to show the front view now so that it tucks underneath and it should feel like there's no tension in the front of the groin, in the inner thighs, the legs are supported. Now sometimes the size of the blanket roll doesn't quite do the trick. See if you can pull it a little bit more like smushed under. If, you're, if you feel like you're almost comfortable, if it's way off, then grab something that's a little higher for the support. And in this case, a lot of times with, um, with poses, if one hip is tighter than the other, we just do what gives one pose its stretch, do, the, do, rather, do what gives one side its stretch, and then do something different for the other. For this, aim to have the knees roughly even because that'll make the pelvis even as well. And then the back part of it is lying down either over a flat, squishy support, like I'm doing here, or if you want to build, the other day I did a, a, a Supta Baddha Konasana on a, on a ramp with bolsters. So if being flat doesn't feel good, if your body would really like to be a bit more upright, you can use your props, especially if you've got blocks and a bolster, but stack a medium block and a tall block behind your bolster. Check the structural integrity before you actually lie down on it. And then you'll lay your blanket over the top and you lie down on that. So either way works. Choose whatever resonates with you and your body today. And as you get situated, check the headrest, make any adjustments as needed. And again, touch in with once you lie down and the back support is set up nicely, check back with the legs, making any 
adjustments that might be needed. Sometimes as we lie down now, the, the hips and knees are in a slightly different position. They may appreciate a little bit of a different support, a little bit different support. Now, let yourself settle in. Take an exaggerated breath in and hold the breath at the top. Through the mouth, let it go. Once again, take a deep breath in, pause at the top. And let it go. One more time. Pause at the top. And let it go. Let the breath flow gently in and out. And let the body start to melt over the props. Feeling the support beneath you. Sensing the air on your skin. and the stability of it hold you, especially in these groundless times. Feel the tangible support beneath you. Let the inner groins deepen as the muscles of the legs relax. Arms wherever they're comfortable. Follow the gentle rhythm of the breath allowing the belly to rise and fall. So this pose is probably like if there were a, I don't know, if there were a king or queen of restorative yoga or a, or a uh, kind of keystone pose in restorative yoga, this would be it. And in yoga lore, it's said to have all kinds of helpful properties from relieving fatigue, and tension in the hips, gives us some space to breathe. It's a little bit of a, a heart opener or chest expansion. It's a pose that is one of the few that's compatible if you've had a meal and you want to take a restful pose in yoga. This is one of the few that is recommended. Gives the abdomen some space. So while we're here, now that we've been here a little while, bring the awareness to your torso Visualize the whole torso from the, the bottom of the pelvis 
to the shoulders and collarbones and, and neck as a container for the breath. And we'll do a little breath work while we're here. This is a great position to do this. Imagining that the breath, like water filling up a bucket, can start from the base of the pelvis and flow up to the navel, continue flowing up to the level of the chest, continue flowing up to where the collarbones and shoulders are. And as you exhale, imagine the breath flows starting with the attention up at the collarbones. Move the attention down the body as you exhale over the chest, over the navel, resting for a moment at the bottom of the pelvis. So take a few breaths, your own normal breath pace. Guide the awareness up the torso on the inhale. At the top of the breath, rest the attention at the shoulders, collarbones. And as you exhale, guide the attention down the body over the chest and the navel to the bottom of the pelvis. Now, if that feels just right and you'd like to stay with that or return to it at any time, these will be your recovery breaths. Observing the breath, moving the attention upward on the inhale, downward on the exhale. Now, if you'd like to add a layer, we'll insert a pause and divide the inhale into three parts. And so, just like we'd fill a bucket kind of a th one third of the way, two thirds, and then all the way full. And we're not trying to like <gasps> take a big deep breath and like hold our breath like it's a contest. It's three parts until you're comfortably full and then a normal exhale. So start with the attention at the bottom of the pelvis. Oh, and of course, if the three part breath feels like it's adding to the stress in your body, and you're feeling more agitated, return to the recovery breaths at your own pace. So starting at the base of the pelvis, inhale to the navel and pause, to the chest and pause, to the collarbones, pause. Exhale normally all the way down. Inhale to the navel, pause, to the chest, pause, to the collarbones, pause, and comfortably down. Just like that, dividing the breath on the inhale, and a long, gentle exhale. Take a few more rounds. Pausing on the inhale, said to have a a calming effect on our nervous system. And that's why with all of this breath work, if it feels like it's stressing you out, set it aside, approach it little by little. It's better to do just a little bit gradually. And now let the breath pattern return to normal, dissolving the pauses.
when you're ready. Use the hands to help bring the knees in, heel toe the feet wider until the feet are mat width or so apart. And windshield wiper the knees gently side to side. Take it at your own pace and to your comfort level. Back to center with the legs however they want to be right now. They'll stay where they are and we'll bring the attention to the arms. Take the arms out cactus style. Now, depending on your support, you may feel more or less of a kind of chest expansion sensation. So let yourself melt into the open hearted, blossoming chest shape, a little bit of a back bend, and then bring the forearms together or as close as they'll willingly go in front of you. Inhale, open up, cactus arm, chest expansion, and then exhale, bring the forearms as close as they can in front. Just like that a couple more times, inhale, opening, expanding, exhale, forearms come together. Two more times. Inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. Unwind the arms. Make a gentle circle overhead. Any angle that's comfortable to give your arms a stretch. And then release that rock over to one side. Very gently press up to seated. Remove your support. Now, if I know some of you are dealing with some, some vertigo, if being flat is less happy for that, and the incline helps you to feel more comfortable and stable, then you can keep the incline here for the next thing that we do. Um, so we're headed on to our side. So if you're using the, the extra pillow for support here, kind of sidle up to it, support your head. You might need to make a little bigger headrest and you've got a, a slight downward angle here or, of course, lie down and flat on your side. Stack the knees. Breathe here. Reach the top arm out in front of you once you arrive here. And we'll take a few thoracic twists, opening up the chest toward the ceiling and then bringing the arm back out in front of you. You decide how much to move the head. Turning the chest to the sky. Aiming to allow as much spinal twist as tolerated. when you're ready. Open up into the twist and stay there. If the arm that's reaching back behind you is not comfortable, especially the neck or the shoulder, bring the arm in, rest the hand on the rib cage so that you get the benefit of that chest opening and twisting, the shoulder melting back behind you. with as comfortable a position as possible for your head and your neck and, and the joints in the shoulder. Take 
take another breath here. And softly let it out. Stay right there. When you're ready, rock over to one side. Change sides. Come over to the other side. And as you come to side two, same thing here. Opening your book on an inhale, closing your book on an exhale. Open on the inhale, close on the exhale. Good, just like that. Next time you open up and you're in the twist, stay there. Again, adjusting the position of the head and the arm so that you get the most out of the spinal twist of the chest turning up toward the sky with the other areas of the body as comfortable as possible. Breathe here and notice this side may feel different. What's it like right now? What's it like now? What's it like now? A few more breaths in the gentle twist. your way over to your side. Press slowly up. Take your time. When you're upright, we'll take a moment in Baddha Konasana, not the supta version, not the supine version. So bring the soles of the feet together with the knees out to the sides and sit as tall as you can here rooting the sitting bones down, elongating the spine and the crown of the head upwards. The arms can go wherever they like. They're not really actively pressing the, the legs. It's not like the old school football or stretch class uh, way of being in this pose. Feel the connection between the soles of the feet. And here, even though this is a more active version, Think of the, the front groins and the inner thighs as the groins deepening and the inner thighs lengthening gradually while you're here. So this has a bit more of hugging in and lifted up energy. Although it's similar, 
in shape to our opening pose. Breathe here. Feel free to close the eyes if you like. Whatever helps you to tune in to the rhythm of the breath. Right? And if, to, if closing the eyes either doesn't feel safe or comfortable or brings you into a place where you kind of check out, then leave the eyes open. want to tune in to the full experience. Breathe through, allow ourselves to fully feel even the uncomfortable things. Increasing our resilience. More breaths right here. Now gather up the knees, walk the feet wider apart. Take the feet fairly wide, sit tall, lean back a bit onto the fingertips and windshield wiper the legs while seated. And you can do little sweet small windshield wipers, or if you want to do them exaggerated, you can let the let the hips, let the pelvis turn more and the legs swing over. You can go as far over as you like. So there's a lot of a lot of range here to explore the way that feels right for you. And come on back to center. And then let's grab something that you can lean on. I'm going to show a couple of options. So um, let me use this chair. This is a restorative version of a pose called Janushirsasana, which is knee head pose which actually is part of where I think a lot of the misconception comes. You're not trying to smush your, your knee to your head. Nobody cares. Not like nobody cares about you. We care about you. But the knee to the head is not really the important thing. So let me show first. If you've got your right leg stretched out straight and your left knee bent, sit tall. Now sometimes this setup is already like, hey, I feel this a lot in the back of the thigh. And if that's the case, it's just it's your hamstrings hanging on like, hey, be careful. Don't go bananas. So if your hamstrings are warning you <laughs> by experiencing a lot of intensity, when you're vertical, do not, do not, do not, do not try to keep your legs straight and fold down toward your, your knee. It does no good. You might, however, grab a chair or lean up against a couch. You kind of have to sidle up to a corner because of the leg position. And lean forward so you can rest your head on something. The idea is to have something that feels energetically quieting by way of letting the head come forward a bit and resting the forehead on something. So it's it's very much not um, not about like get a big hamstring stretch. Though you might be feeling a hamstring stretch. Does that make sense? And in this case, your back, if it rounds a little, it's okay. See what it feels like though. If, if the default is that your back rounds, lift up a little bit out of it. Like you're trying to sit up straight even as you're tilted forward and just see what that is like for your body today if it causes aggravation in the body then then back off a bit dial it down let your background some definitely breathe and then 
for my bendy friends. You can take your pillow or your bolster on top of the leg itself and pillow, blanket, whatever you want to stack and then use the stack as the support for the arms or the head. The choice is yours. Do what feels more comfortable in your body today. We'll be here for just a little longer on this side. Very slowly ease your way up. Stretch out the bent leg, change sides. So now the other leg is straight, knee bends out to the side. I didn't mention it on side one, but if your, your bent knee wants some support underneath the, the shin or the thigh, feel free to put a blanket or block underneath there. Usually the main area we notice the support or, or absence of it is as we come forward. And see what it's like on this side. Right, if it's pinchy or weird, try coming up a little bit higher. See if that gives you the, the space that the body needs, gives the body the space it needs. Let the back of the neck relax and the shoulders melt. Inhaling and exhaling. Inhaling and exhaling. Take a few more breaths here. set the supports aside and we'll stretch the legs out for a moment swing the feet swing the whole leg whole leg swing in and out and in and out and then let's return one more time to baddha konasana seated upright soles of the feet together knees out to the side and once again rooting down into your seat sitting tall Crown of the head rises up, shoulders relax, arms wherever they want to be. Feel the, the connection. It's like you're, you're closing the circuit um, with the soles of the feet touching each other. Breathing in, breathing out. in breathing out same thing here eyes either lightly open the gaze is soft or closed if you prefer Thank you. 
gently. And bring the knees back in. And stretch the legs out. Swing the legs once again in and out. And let's turn ourselves over for a moment. We'll use a supported version of child's pose. So once again, we'll rely on our towels or blankets, blocks, really gather up whatever you have available. And the idea here, let's see, if I'm using something kind of narrow, like yoga blankets or a bolster, I'm gonna start with my knees wide enough that I can kind of tuck the, the bolster in between. And then I'll stack maybe a blanket or two on top. And I'll show you why so many, why so many props, why? Because in this case, what I'd like to have is the sense that my whole, like my chest and abdomen are resting directly on the support. I'm going to turn this sideways so that it's easier to see. Hello. So I'm not trying to like have it just support part of my torso. I'm trying to get the support in and close enough to my my thighs and, and abdomen and high enough that when I come forward, I really rest on it. And for those of you with knee stuff or hip stuff, you'll, you might notice my bum is still in the air. It's not actually on my, on my heels. That's kind of where I land nor, normally in my child's pose unless I, it's at the end of class. So your hips don't have to come down all the way as long as your torso is nicely supported. However, and those of you who've had class with me know this, may be familiar with this, you could take an extra blanket. I have the cushion, so I'm going to use that. But you could take an extra rolled up blanket or something, kind of smoosh it underneath your bum so that even your bum has something to rest on. Now, if it's resting really comfortably on your heels, that is not necessary. It's just another way to support the body in different ways so that the experience here, we're not trying to replicate what regular child's pose feels like. This is a nervous system quieting version of it. And so we're giving the body as much support as possible so that as you go into this, your body feels that support and it's like, oh, okay, I can, I can let go of it now. I don't need to hold myself in the position because you're already being, being held by the props. And this seems a good time to mention that the restorative yoga practice is not about getting the big stretch. It is instead about quieting the nervous system, which I think we could all use right now. Turn the head, if your head's turned to one side, turn it to the other side now. Breathing here, allowing the props to support the body. Now, while you're breathing here, guide your inhale or your attention as you inhale. As you inhale, guide your attention to the low back as if it could inflate with the breath. And get 
spacious. Exhale and let the hips melt into whatever is beneath them. Inhale, inflating gradually the low back. Exhale, let the hips sink. A few more rounds, inhaling, inflating the low back. Exhaling, sinking in. One more, inhaling to the low back. Exhaling, sink in. When you're ready, be very gentle. If you have something underneath your bum, slide that out first. And then slowly, slowly, slowly. And press your way up to seated. Swing your legs out. Now you can do what feels good for you. If you want to sit and stretch the legs and move the legs around, that might feel nice. If you love down dog, you could also stretch your legs out by taking a, a brief down dog and pedaling the feet in place. Just something to unfold the legs and bring the circulation back into them. And bring the knees down. And let's swing the legs around again. We'll come back to our side lying position, this time support for everyone. So actually, hang on, I kind of lied that it's not really side lying. It's a supported twist. So if I'm using my bolster, I'm going to take the extra blankets off it or start out with like two folded blankets, something like that. And I'll sit. My legs are swinging around off to one side. So let's just say your legs have swung around to your left and on your right hip is your bolster extended out lengthwise. And as we prepare for this pose, there, we may add more height to this, but we're going to go down directly onto whatever is there first. I'm going to turn, and I might kind of scooch my hips a little bit so I can really turn my chest toward the bolster. And as I'm lowering down, I'm thinking, can I get my navel on the bolster? Can I get my whole chest on the bolster? And can I really lengthen and elongate my torso and spine so it's the whole length of the bolster? I know that's not difficult for you tall people, but for all like the short person that I am, it feels like a very ambitious idea. Um, when you get settled there, rest your head. Now, if you're like, mm, this is not really restful, I'd like a pillow for my head, it feels too low, great. Put a pillow or a blanket under your head. Or if you want a little more lift to the whole twisty thing, you can add that. The choice is yours. So take the extra moment it really is worth it if you're like, eh, I'm not really comfortable, I'm kind of almost comfortable. Grab the extra blanket, make the comfort adjustment, you are worth it. And remember, your knees need not be stacked. In fact, they shouldn't be. They're a little bit staggered when you're here. The bottom knee is closer into you and the top leg can go out a little further away. bent however much they want to bend. I apologize, it's kind of a boob squisher. So make any adjustments so that you, you can be comfortable in your whole body. If it does feel too chest squishing, lift your 
add props and lift your head up and lift your belly up, your abdomen. So whatever area feels like it's getting smushed, add a little lift under the other areas so they can come up to meet you. Gently. I'll stay here for another moment. Let's, let's not switch sides just yet. Now in this restorative twist, usually we'll have our we'll be looking in the same direction as our knees are rather than like rotating more and looking away. However, if your neck is healthy and you would like to gently turn the head in the other direction, test it out and see. You can always come on back. When you're ready, press into your hands to slowly ease yourself upright. Give yourself a moment to get used to upright and then turn to the other side or move your, your props around. So now the bolster's at the other hip Same thing, stagger the knees for comfort. Feel free to scooch the hips around a little bit so that you're turning your navel and aiming your spine along the whole length of your bolster. Really lengthen out here. It is worth it. Lay yourself down gently, lovingly. Once again, add a blanket under the head or the abdomen or both. Turn the head in a way that feels comfortable. Breathing in. Breathing out. Allow the props to support you. Stay right there.
Feel the breath out in the sides of the rib cage. And when we're in a position like this where the abdomen is supported, it sends the, the movement when we take a, a generous breath, it sends the movement a bit extra out into the sides of the ribs. That's a nice place to explore. Wide in the side ribs with each inhale. And with the exhale, let the body settle and sink into the shape of the pose. Ribs wide and on the inhale, and they settle back in. So we were talking about the breath, um, like filling up a bucket. You might, if you like visual images for breathing, think of bucket handles, like a standard, like, you know, stainless, uh, I guess, uh, rather a, like a galvanized pail, galvanized metal pail um, with a normal bucket handle. Think of having a handle on each side of your rib cage. And when you're inhaling that expansion, it's like your, your bucket handles are swinging up and out to the sides. And when you're exhaling, your bucket handles are, are settling back down and resting alongside your, your waist. Inhale and the handles swing out, the ribs expand into that space. Exhaling, the bucket handles swing back down and in. And just like that, inhale into your bucket handle ribs. And exhale, relax. And use your hands to press the floor and slowly come up, very gently, ease yourself to upright. And we'll come once again into a forward bend. And so remember, and we'll take the feet wide this time. So if I were using a chair, and a, one reason might be it's comfortable for my back, or maybe it feels better for the, the hamstrings. I'll take my feet out to the sides. Now, if the hammies are really not liking when I come forward, I'll add some height here. So I can lean forward. And once again, we're looking for a place to rest the forehead that feels like it's a calming kind of pressure. It shouldn't feel like you like you're, you're, you have a ponytail and it's pulled too tight. Like it shouldn't feel like it's pulling the skin of your forehead up. Just direct pressure, calming, grounding. Now if leaning up on a chair seat doesn't feel good. You can simply sit upright. It has less of that quieting feeling. If you want to fold lower, by all means, don't let me stop you. You can have instead your bolster and blanket stack out in front of you. Pile up your pillows and lean forward on them. The main thing have enough support and in this case you don't necessarily have to have your your abdomen like something pressing pre pressure on your abdomen you can have open space around the the belly that's just fine as long as your arms and your forehead and your chest are are nicely supported you feel steady here it's not too much pull on the low back or the backs of the thighs. 
There's a little bit of work to keep the legs in a neutral position. They're not rolling way out to the sides. And the feet are lightly flexed. Also upright, not rolled out to the sides. And stay right here and breathe. And take a few more breaths here in your forward bend. The inhale at a normal pace. Take a little extra time with the exhale. And slow it down just a touch. Maybe 2%, 3% slower than usual. Take a few more breaths here. And press into the floor, slowly, gently, make your way to upright. And if you have a chair nearby, we won't need it for this next pose, but don't get rid of it. We will use it uh, for Shavasana. The next pose we'll do is a supported bridge pose. You're in control of how high you take the pelvis. We're not looking for as high as humanly possible, but just enough to have a little bit of a downward angle. So you can use one folded blanket or towel. You can use a bolster. You can, of course, use a, use a block. But since we're here for a while, I'll, I'm recommending something on the softer side as long as that feels OK for you. So I'm going to start out. This bolster is very puffy. So if you're concerned about your like shoulders or low back and don't feel especially uh, like agile, sitting up on a bolster and coming to lying down. Do it a different way. I'm going to show this first. Way number one is you kind of scoot yourself back. So your bum is already up on the bolster. And then you lower yourself to your elbows. And then you kind of squish and wriggle and lower yourself onto your back. And then arrange where you are. I'm going to put my feet up on this. Now the other way of course, is to do it like we usually do it, right? Lie down first on your back flat and then add the lift. For reasons unknown to me, I, I <laughs> sometimes I like to come from the bottom up and others from the top down. You can do it either way. Now, from here, you can have your knees bent and your feet flat. I'm going to the outside of the bolster. If you want, you can be right on top of the bolster. That brings the pelvis a bit more neutral, so that could feel nice. If you're comfortable, I know some folks are super comfortable stretching their legs out. Now I'm going to run out of bolster, and then for me, if I stretch my legs out straight here, it's too much on my hip flexors, and it messages into the low back. So. 
absolutely, if your body is t very, very comfortable with your legs stretched out or if your bolster is a bit lower and it's not as much drop, your hip flexors are open, more open than mine, by all means, feel free to do that. But if it's, if it's pulling on your, feels like it's pulling on your back, then don't do that. Breathe here. We're getting a very mild inversion by raising the pelvis up a little higher than the heart. Be gentle with the breath. Let it flow any way it wants to while you're here. Although the chin is slightly down, allow enough room that you can swallow and relax the throat. Allow room to breathe. And let the front of the throat relax and the back of the neck lengthen. Let the collarbones broaden, let the shoulders melt. Receive the support beneath the body. We'll be here for a little while longer. So if there are any comfort adjustments that your body is requesting right now, Calmly attend to them. If you're feeling fidgety, see if you can not attend to the fidgety part. Maybe for a few more breaths. Stay right there, allowing the pose, the shape of the pose and the benefits contained within it to do their work on you. Most yoga poses were more aware of the doing part. And in restorative yoga, there's certainly a, a sense of 
and almost undoing. Letting the areas that have been compressed and and wound tightly, allowing that to loosen, getting some breath and life and circulation into constricted places and spaces and allowing the nourishment to come in. Now, when you're ready, our next pose will be kind of a usual hip stretch, so not so much in the restorative vein. However, we'll do it with a calm, restorative focus. You might try it from here with the elevated pelvis. So let's give it a go. If you have a bolster that's underneath, you can rest your feet. I'm going to put my feet up on my bolster. You could certainly have them down low. But sometimes getting them a bit higher up will give us an advantage to set up for the hip stretch. Stretch. Cross your right ankle over your left thigh. And there's your beginning of what would normally be like taking us to thread the needle or upside down pigeon. And then I'm going to take just this top leg and let it fall in. Because my pelvis is elevated, I feel the effect of gravity helping the leg to fall in, and I actually need to pull it in less. Just give it a little nudge as it starts to come in. The bottom leg can do what it wants. If you want to raise it in the air and use it as a helper, that's fine too. If you want to leave the foot on the bolster, that works. If none of it works for you today, then feel free to remove the prop that's underneath the pelvis and do your hip stretch in the usual way that your body does it. Remember, if the right leg is crossed over, it's the right outer buttock area where, that we're looking to stretch. So see what facilitates that that space. And breathe. Let the let the air and the space come into the pose. Take a few more breaths here and gently unwind and change legs and suss it out on this side, left ankle crossed on top and how do the legs, one or both, want to move in toward the chest? If it starts to feel too compressed, deep in the breath, suss it out. Make small movements. See if it can be resolved. Any weird, pinchy, dis, um, uncomfortable spots. See if they can be resolved with small movements. Check in. See if you're getting the hip stretch. 
in the outer buttock area. And once you found it, ride the waves of the breath. Exploring the edges, the sensations. Deep breath in. Take your time with the exhale. Take a few more breaths here. Very gently unwind the legs, place the feet on the mat once again, and push your support towards your feet. Push it away, push it away. Come down nice and slowly, take your time, and feel the length in your back as you set it down now on the mat. Take a few breaths, nothing to do here, just feel the length in your spine. And draw the knees in, take happy baby, or hug the knees and rock. Gently unwind that. Make your way over onto one side. Gently ease yourself up. Take your time. We were just a touch inverted. Now we're returning to upright. So for our Shavasana. You're welcome to do a little twist before you get settled. I'll show a couple of different variations. Option one, legs in a chair, gives us some of the benefits, again, of the inversion, more in the legs now than in the, than in the pelvis. Can help relieve fatigued legs. Same thing with legs up a wall. If you love legs up a wall and you've got a wall handy, you can scoot yourself over, take your legs straight up a wall. Or make a little bench out of your, little stone hinge out of your bolster and blocks. And let's see where, I lost a block somewhere. There we go. <laughs> So 
can make a little stone henge out of your blocks or stack up your blocks and your blankets so that your legs have an elevated surface to rest on. If you're doing Stonehenge, again, make sure you check for structural support. It's not really dangerous if you get there and it feels wobbly. You'll just notice it's, if it's wobbly, make it more steady. So you don't have to hold your legs with the power of your mind. Let them be supported by your props. If you want a blanket under your head, have that. And then as you take the extra moment to gather whatever makes you feel really comfortable, nicely supported, cozy, happy, whatever that might be. And when you have that and you're settled in, Take a deep inhale and squeeze all the muscles. Squeeze every muscle in the body. Exhale and let it go. And do that again. Inhale, squeeze all the muscles. Exhale, let them go. One last time. Inhale, squeezing everything. Exhale, letting go. And as you let go now is the time for any subtle adjustments. Placing the legs where they are free to, the toes and feet are free to roll out. Legs are well supported. Back is nicely supported. The low back can unwind, the upper back can spread out spaciously. The hands, the arms, the shoulders have nothing they need to hold on to. They are being held. Inhaling and exhaling. rise and fall. Let the heart blossom. Swallow and relax the throat, the jaw, the tongue. Let the cheeks relax, the eyes rest. the forehead become quiet and calm and the scalp muscles relaxing resting
now that you're plugged into Mother Earth's recharger. Give yourself permission to receive that, that charge, that nourishment. And if there's something that bubbles up in your awareness that you would like to invite in a feeling and energy or color, whatever. If something arises, then go ahead and imagine that flowing in, nourishing you. Receiving the nourishment, the mind, the body, the soul appreciates right now. As you're receiving this nourishment, Maybe there's something you've been holding on to that can be released. Now that you have the nourishment you need, there might not be a need to hang on to that other energy or feeling. choice is yours. Very slowly and gently, deepen the breath. Take the thumb and lightly touch it to each fingertip, reawakening the body. 
Wiggle the fingers, rotate the wrists. Wiggle the toes, rotate the ankles. If you're stretched out, you might reach the legs long. If they're up on a chair, some other prop, let the knees fall into the chest. Take a moment to stretch and then a moment to fold in. And rock gently. Go slowly like you're pouring yourself over to one side. And slowly press yourself up. Come to a seated position, gently, gradually. And as you come to upright, Pause here. Sit tall, feel the ground beneath you. Lengthen towards sky above, bring the palms together. Inhale, lift the heart. Exhale, lower the chin. May you be happy. May you be healthy. May you be safe and at ease. Thank you. Namaste. Thank you.